question is from Cam the Lamb. Is intermittent, intermittent fasting ever a good idea when wanting to lose weight? No. Uh, we, we talked about, we did a whole episode on why fasting is a terrible right. way to lose Not weight. Not with that focus in yeah, mind. Now, exactly. Now, now, keep in mind, can you lose weight by, let's change the word from fasting to not eating. Can you lose weight by not eating? Well, yeah, that's what yeah, happens. It's kind of a byproduct. <laughs> that's what that, happens yeah. when you don't eat, you lose weight. Is that a good uh, tool and method to losing weight in terms of the kinds of behaviors that you develop in terms of the relationship that you encourage yourself to develop with food? Terrible. Yeah, terrible. Mo models have been doing this for decades. Yeah, they, they, exactly. <laughs> now all of a sudden it's healthy <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we put we threw a name on it, backed it by science, and showed some things with growth hormone and neurogenesis, and now we're like, oh, it's fucking healthy for you. Now yeah. everybody's it's like, no, this shit, these skinny ass models have been doing this for years where they fucking don't eat all yeah, day long yeah, and yeah. they have carrots for dinner. Yeah, like, now all of a sudden you're like, you know, what are you doing, uh, Greta? Like, yeah. oh, I'm fasting. I'm biohacking. I, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> no, it's no, no, no. Starving yourself to try to lose weight. Now, here's what ends up happening. Forget about the physiological effects and the and the results. Yes, if you don't eat, you lose weight. Okay, let's 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 get that out of the way. But let's let's talk about what ends up happening psychologically or behaviorally. You end up encouraging this restrict binge model of nutrition where I don't eat, I don't eat, I'm restricting myself, I'm losing weight, I'm losing weight, and now it's time to eat. Now I'm off the diet, and then when you're off, you're off. It's a complete reversal. It's a, a, a symptom eruption, and it looks like binging. It actually encourages that type of behavior. Um, the only people that should be using fasting are people who use it for overall health and wellness and people who have good relationships to food. If you have issues with food, especially if you have issues like anorexia or bulimia, even if it's been in your past, even if you think you're past all of that, yeah. fasting, you are- I'll at, avoid it. Yeah, you're, it's like you're a recovering alcoholic who's like, yeah, I haven't had an alcoholic drink for two years. I'm going to go get a job at a bar or I'm going to go you know, be a wine tester now for the rest. Terrible, terrible approach. Do you guys have a favorite type of person you like to teach it to? Oh, Yeah. Like when you think about like the like I have a I have a type of person that I like to teach oh, six fasting. meal a day kind of person. I, I was yeah. that guy. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think that I think somebody who understands macros, counts really well, they they break up their meals four to six times a day. They're religious about that. They're good. They're great. And they're and, and they're in shape. They're healthy. They're all those things. I love to teach them intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. I love to introduce them to, hey, it's okay. We cannot eat for you know, 12 hours straight and you're not going to lose most of Their it's relationship like to food is the, yeah. is the diff is the opposite. It was mind blowing for me. You know, I came from the, 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 I had a, my uh, body image was about, I thought I was too skinny. So I was always trying to gain weight and put muscle on. So I was literally afraid of skipping a meal. In fact, I would get so irritable and angry when I missed a meal. And I thought it was because I needed to eat, but in reality it wasn't. It was a psychology. It was because now that I, I say, oh shit, it's been five hours since I've had my last meal, I am thinking in my mind that muscle is eating itself, that my body's metabolizing its muscle and I'm going to lose gains. Oh no, I need to feed myself type of deal. The first time I did a fast, I fasted for 24 hours and the fact that I didn't lose any muscle, the fact that my performance didn't decrease and that I felt okay, it blew my mind. Yeah. It shook up my whole world. All of a sudden, I broke that chain that I had connected to food. No longer did I, re you know, I realized that no longer do I have to carry protein bars with me everywhere I went, that I did, I had to eat every two hours. Yeah. I had a similar experience, but I, you know, being on the athletic side of the spectrum, not as neurotic about what I was eating in terms of, you know, having to have like a very regimented schedule, but more just in, in excess amount of surplus, right? Because it was all about like how I was feeling energy wise and like how that was translating to the field. And so, you know, very much like dependent on these big meals, like constant big meals. And so to now, you know, take that away and understand like what real, like what hunger actually feels like was like a totally different experience. And then also just the social elements and, you know, everything involved with it for me to just step away from it was just a very you know unique uh, thing to go through so that's my favorite person to talk to then i have my least favorite person to try and teach it to or will i will avoid teaching it to and that's a fat loss person someone who comes to me and they say adam i want to lose weight uh and my girlfriend or my friend is doing intermittent fasting you know can we try that i say no 
Uh, and I and I won't let them try that, at least not at the beginning, because almost always, and you've heard me talk on the show before, my diet philosophy, like when I have a client that wants to lose weight, I don't restrict food at the beginning. I find it, uh, I've have had way more success by introducing more good food into their diet than by restricting and taking away. Because most people that have a weight problem, that struggle with weight loss, have already done the yo-yo dieting mm-hmm. and already have that relationship that Sal was talking about, the um, binging and then restricting the binging and the restricting. So I don't want to encourage that by teaching them intermittent fasting. Now, I will allow them to do that down the road, maybe six months after we've been training together and we've built up their metabolism and they're eating more calories than they've ever ate before. And I'll say, hey, this Friday, let's do a fast. You know, And I prefer that over the, the, the most popular model of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has become so trendy that it's this every day everybody does it. It's a, oh, I don't eat till two every day. You know, that's mm-hmm. It's just, it works for my lifestyle. Like, that's fine if it works for you. I get it. But that's not how I like to coach to it. If I in, introduce somebody who is uh, originally their goal is to be weight is weight loss, one, I won't teach them at the beginning how to, to do it. I first want to introduce all the good foods. I first want to build up their metabolism to where they're eating more calories and more food than they ever had before. And then when I introduce fasting, I want to do it like one day. Mm-hmm. It's one day and it's like intermittently. And I'll say, hey, this... Thursday or whatever coming up, you know, we're not going to eat all day long. It's an all day fast and it's not a a, a window fasting and it's not something I want them to do every day. It's just, I want to be able to show them they can have this and see how you, and then also talk to them about how they feel. The the best health effects that come from fasting actually happen after 24, 48, 72 hours. It's Mm -hmm. the long fast and even longer. There's, there's long fast that they've studied that show tremendous uh, health benefits. The health benefits you get from not eating 12 hours a day every single day are not the same. And a lot of these studies show that. Uh, there's, there's some benefits for some people, but I will say this. Some people experience hormonal issues if they consistently and constantly fast every single day. You see testosterone lower in men. You see these progesterone estrogen imbalances in women. Women tend to be much more sensitive to consistent, you know, frequent uh, type of fasting. It's the infrequent longer fast that I found have the best benefit and the science supports it. So what I like to do is I like to a couple times a year or a few times a year, I'll do a 72 hour fast. And that's where you get the anti-cancer benefits, the anti-inflammatory benefits. I get to dis- detach from food. So I get to practice the, the ancient spiritual practice of detachment um, when it comes to food for 72 hours. That's where I see some of the benefits. But before you even look at fasting, there's so many other things you can tackle before you go there. Like you need to learn how to just eat better in general, uh, learn how to eat your, you know, more balanced macros, not overeat, pick better foods, you know, those kinds of things before you go into not eating at all for, you know, for, for your health. 